Gospel and Homily for Trinity Sunday. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have still many things to say to you, but they will be too much for you now. But when the Spirit of Truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth, since he will not be speaking as from himself, but will say only what he has learned, and he will tell you of the things to come. He will glorify me, since all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I said, all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. The Gospel of the Lord. The teacher was talking to her junior class about God and how hard it was to get to know God. Where is God? The teacher asked the class. I know where God is, called out one little boy. He's in our bathroom. In the bathroom, the teacher replied. Yes. Every morning my dad stomps up the stairs, raps on the bathroom door and yells, My God, are you still in there? Yes, God is in the bathroom because he's everywhere. Our happiness as human beings lies in acknowledging his existence and living by his commandments. The Old Testament tells us that at the foot of Mount Sinai, the Israelites fashioned a golden calf, called it God, and then they worshipped it. This happens as Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments from the true God at the top of the mountain. Now, the first of these commandments is, I am the Lord your God, you shall not have strange gods before me. So, in obedience to the Lord, Moses, when he came down from the mountain, he smashed the golden calf to smithereens. The question we could ask now is, are there any golden calves in our society which we need to smash? Life and death issues come immediately to mind. During the war, when the overpacked train loads of people arrived at Auschwitz, it was decided who would live and who would die. And closer to our time, it's not uncommon these days for medical personnel to ask mums-to-be if they want to keep their baby. Now that signs, sounds like playing God to me. At the other end of life, poorly elderly patients may pick up vibes that they would be better off out of the way. Often people put the blame on God or religion for fueling all wars. Now that's a rather sweeping statement. It's the breaking of God's first commandment what causes wars, not God. Even natural disasters are often triggered by humans. Soil erosion, for instance, caused by the deforestation, often results in fatal landslides. The first commandment requires us to be stewards of God's creation, not exploiters. But there are also caricatures of God in circulation as well. One such is what I've heard called the cuddly bear God. This is a sugar-coated God who is falling over himself to smooth out all the ruffles of our lives. This parody of God keeps us shielded from every pain. And yet, how many people have found the true God only in pain and suffering? How many people have turned from false gods only in the midst of a struggle? Jesus asks us to take up our crosses every day and follow him, not use religion as an escape hatch from life's problems. Jesus himself, he never wanted to be cast in the mold of a superman, a quick fixer of everything which goes wrong. 
He won't send rain from a blue sky, no matter how much we pray. In today's second reading, we'll only share the glory of God if we have already carried his cross and shared in his sufferings. So I think the cuddly bear God is for room 101. The book of Genesis says that God made man in his own image and likeness. Some aim to refashion God into their own image. We don't play God or dilute the demands of his gospel for our own advantage. Best let God be God and us to recognize our creaturely dependence on him. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all.